We begin this latest sumo roundup with news that these guys are shifting base. In 2007, Tatsunami Stable moved from the Kokugikan's doorstep to Tsukuba Mirai, an expanding commuter town in Ibaraki. The ban on wrestler use of public transport, and thus the Tsukuba Express trains, has brought home just how remote that location is. The hour-plus drive to the Kokugikan not only wearisome, but coming with real risks, as Akua's car smash-up last November proved. And so, the Tatsunami boys will, post-May, be moving into Takakesho's old stable, in Tokyo's Hashiba district, ten minutes from the arena. The farewell articles to building owner and retiring coach Chigano Uda last week thus have a false ring to them. Far from leaving the sport, he's staying heavily involved with this tenancy agreement, presumably for the rest of his life. It also begs the questions, did he throw his former tenants into a bidding war? Or was coach Tokiwayama simply desperate to escape his clutches the moment their stock deal expired? Intrigue abounds. Also moving is Futagoyama Stable, from the military airfields of Tokorozawa to the building just vacated by Takami Sakari. Azumazeki Stable was coaxed into Katsushika Ward three years ago as part of the local government's tourism efforts, and its impending demise doubtless had ward officers phoning around for replacement takers. Futagoyama, even more remote than Tatsunami, answered the call and will relocate there, at a date not yet set. It's less than three years since Futagoyama set up in Tokorozawa to much local fanfare, and his decision to leave will cause much disappointment. And while Sumo's central command insists stables should manage themselves, for the sake of business integrity, it must find ways of ensuring that big promises made to communities are kept. And how tangled is this part of sumo history becoming? Futagoyama, for decades the property of the Hanadas, is not only in the hands of Takanohana's rival Miyabiyama, but moving into the building built for Azumazeki, erstwhile home of Akebono. Other stable news sees at least two further virus infections confirmed at Michinoku, home of Kiribayama and the retired Kakuryu. Staffer Fukuno Sato tested positive on Saturday, with a lower division man testing likewise on Monday. Another lower division infection was then reported on Tuesday, we presume at Michinoku, but the stable name was not given. Sumo press chief Shibatayama said that he feared further Michinoku cases may arise. Staying with the virus, Japan's painfully slow rollout of the vaccine program means there'll be no sumo tour this year. The autumn and winter events were officially called off on Tuesday, taking the total absence of tour dates to two full years. And in another twist, Aichi Prefecture, home of July's Nagoya tournament, is preparing to introduce special virus prevention measures, which is one step short of state of emergency. While the Japanese definition of emergency is unlike any other I've read, this is worth keeping an eye on. And finally, the great sumo city of Kashiwa is in mourning after one of its famous sons passed. It's been announced after some delay, not unusual here, that the ex-Sekiwake Kidinji died just shy of his 68th birthday on March the 1st due to multiple organ failure. Some five years, we understand, after having a brain tumour removed. I don't appear to have a picture of him, but I have several of his thrusting rival Fujizakura, who traded some 108 blows with him in their epic blood-stained bout of May 1975. Although I lost, it's my greatest sumo memory, the now 73-year-old says. It sure felt as though we gave everything. He was far bigger and younger, and my lungs just gave out. But now, despite being younger, he's gone before me, which is sad. Tributes have poured in from the Kashiwa community and beyond. Takano Sho is the first Kashiwa-born Sekiwake since Kidinji, after a four-decade gap. 
He and the other Kashiwa boys, including Horshoryu from his new base, will strongly continue what Kidinji started.